So here we are, part two of our intrepid adventure. I've just removed the table, and obviously used to sit there. Put it to one side, and also I've taken the nut off the end of the cap. Which drops back on. The new flat wheel has arrived, which is 125 mil diameter, 10 mil thick, with a 20 mil bore, which is great, except for one thing. 20 mil bore is not a 20 mil bore. So that would have fitted lovely onto this original arbor. Unfortunately, that doesn't. So off camera, as always, I've made this, the new arbor. That comfortably slides on there. And then we've got, obviously, a new wheel. And a large washer. Now I have made all this off camera because my machining is, I think I said questionable before. That's one way of putting it. But basically, my old game was heavy maintenance and engineering. And anything under 5'10 was considered somewhat lightweight. So making something like this, for me, it's like learning microsurgery. And the other reason why I don't show it is because uh, I lose patients very, very quickly. And I'm afraid there's an awful lot of bad language involved. As I'm trying to cope with my Colchester's lack of tolerance now and the amount of slack in everything. In fact, you probably find there's more tension in a prostitute's nick elastic. But we've achieved it. And if I just give it a little zip, you see that she runs quite fine. Put my finger up against there. There's no vibration or oscillation at all on it. So I'll consider that a win. So the next part we've got to do is mount the table. So this can go on there. So I know I said I'd never use aluminium again for one of these tables, but I've got aluminium. So I'm going to use it for one of these tables. What I might end up doing actually is have a go fly cutting. Something I've never tried. But that's another one. So the idea is with my little slot I can mount that in that position there. But to do that I need an angle bracket which comes out off the bottom. Stands up and got enough material underneath it to support it and stop it from wobbling. So I've got that there. I'm trying to turn this round. A nice piece of again aluminium uh, it's a hundred by 15 mil thick and what I require is that area there so what I'm going to do take it across to the band so and when I've marked that line there I'll cut this piece off so it's out of the way and then what I'm hoping I'll be able to do if there's enough meat left in that block is cut this part out also on the band so so what you're left with is that so I'm gonna go do that now as per usual, I forgot to record what I was doing, but it's plain and evident to see anyway. The table is mounted, the bracket is mounted, and as you can see, I've machined a radius slot there. The idea of this is the fact that the original Harold Hall design worked everything around a six inch stone or wheel. Uh, this is a five inch, so I don't quite get the clearance at the back end when I'm sharpening. So by having the slot, I can drop the table down and get the correct clearance. So that's the idea of that. That washer is normally on there, but I've taken off just so you can see where the slot is now I've done it. <clears throat> on the original design as well, you will find the scribe marks or scribe lines coming from this corner back this way. I believe they're two degrees. The idea is instead of the block being directly on the face, it's tipped slightly to give the clearance towards the center of the cutter. Which is all well and good, but you know me, I've got to be slightly different. So what I've done, I've made this. And it's basically a square, which is set at two degrees on one side. That will fit on there with a slot, which allows me to move it backwards and forwards. So that when the backstop block goes on, I'm always guaranteed to be at two degrees. I'm never going to increase or decrease the angle. So that's the idea of that. I have got to put a slot in there, like I said, but that's where my problem is. I'll go to that in a moment. The other thing I've done, I had to go fly cutting, first time ever. And as you know, I am not a machinist. 
and I spend most of my time looking at videos to find out how to do things. And one of the people uh, I always go to as a reference has sent me a sticker. And as you can see, it's Joe Pye. And he actually states on there that he taught me something. He taught me a bloody lot. Um, I always go back to Joe because his techniques are brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And he explains everything really well. And also, Joe, yes, they are hand painted, 3D printed, and then I hand paint them, which takes about an hour. And now I think we should go to see what my little problem is. Now all you sparkies and electrical fiends out there will probably know exactly where this is straight away. It's a contactor. Eight pin, 240 volt, goes jiggy jiggy, but it doesn't go worry worry. This was supposed to be an inside of a oilproof waterproof enclosure. It is not. Well it was at the bottom end because it was full of oil. And unfortunately the contacts inside have burnt out. Uh, there was some of the miss when I was doing the my little square thing here. When I was machining that. And it sounded like there was a knock coming from the mill and I wasn't sure whether there was something to do with the cutting tool or something to do with the mill itself. And eventually when I pressed the start button it wouldn't. And the knock was the actual motor engaging and disengaging because the power was basically going off every 15 seconds because of the contactors had arced out. Well, they hadn't arced, they'd gone. There was nothing left of them. So, at this moment in time, we've got spaghetti guts and no switch. So, the mill at this moment in time is a very pretty green ornament. I've tried to get a switch for it locally. There's no chance. I had a look on, well, every possible website using the numbers and everything else. They're available in China for a, uh, a reasonable price, about £45, but it's about a six-week wait. So I got in touch with a rather reputable uh, company which deals with inverters and motors. Uh, because my wife said she couldn't put up with me sulking all the time. And she lent me the money to go buy a new setup to save the hassle. So I sent my lovely email telling them that I was desperate for an inverter package complete with motor. Um, and the money was waiting, please let me know how quick it can be delivered so I can carry on doing my little projects. And they never got back to me. And this is over a week. So I've emailed again and still no response from him. So, what I've managed to do via Amazon is find a switch in Germany. So I've got another two weeks to wait. So, we'll basically plod along until then. Hope you all enjoyed it. I'll see if I can make some progress somewhere. Um, thanks to all the likes and subscribes as usual. It is appreciated, you know that. And I'll see you on the next one.